Up next, Dr. DeMaria is joined by Dr. Tifo, Associate Professor of Nutrition and Exercise Physiology at the University of Missouri in Columbia. They discuss simvastatin impairs exercise training adaptations. So Dr. Tifo, tell us, how did you get interested in this question? Well, we initially started out to perform a study to see what was more effective at lowering metabolic syndrome risk factors, exercise or statins plus exercise or statins alone. And we had a small seed grant from the University of Missouri, and we started out with a small project. And after we had a, just a few subjects done through a 12-week intervention of either exercise or statins plus exercise, we noticed that our people taking statins were not improving their VO2 max or their fitness after 12 weeks of exercise training. We thought this was significant because they were very sedentary and had very low fitness to start the study. So we then applied for an American Heart Grant more focused on this question and then collected a lot more data on different subjects and moved forward from there. And at the same time, when we saw the data initially, we started seeing a lot of stuff in the literature about potential effects of statins on mitochondrial performance, which started leading us to believe that there was something there to go after. So you asked the question as to whether or not in a group of patients, and my recollection is specifically metabolic syndrome type patients, that statins would have the effect on the adaptations to exercise training. Is that correct? That is correct. And was randomized prospective how many individuals? It was 19 in the exercise group and I think 18 in the exercise plus statin group. And what were these patients like? Were they classic coronary risk type patients? They had two out of five metabolic syndrome characteristics. We went with two out of five instead of three out of five because it was difficult to recruit three out of five who weren't already on statins and other meds. They were basically obese. The average BMI was 34, sedentary, stating no programmed exercise, and then they usually had either hypertension, and or elevated waist circumference. And then a few here and there had the triglyceride or the elevated LDL. So what kind of exercise training? Was this walk, run, jog type program or was it supervised? How vigorous was the exercise training? Almost 100% supervised exercise. At the end, they would be able to go do one about a week by themselves, but it was five days a week at 60 to 70% of heart rate reserve mostly on a treadmill, so it was really a fast-paced walk, usually at a, somewhat of a grade. As they became more trained, of course, they'd have to increase the grade and the speed a little bit as the 12 weeks went along. And then, of course, it was a 12-week exercise intervention. What kind of change did you see in an exertional capacity? In the exercise-only group, they had a 10% increase in VO2 max and a similar increase in endurance or time to exhaustion during the stress test. And in the exercise plus statin group, they had no improvement, or it was only, I guess it was a 1.5% improvement. Obviously, an adequate kind of physical conditioning program to produce a 10% benefit in those patients who weren't on statin, that's pretty amazing that, how much statin were they on? They were on 40 milligrams a day of simvastatin, and we chose that because when we started the study three or four years ago, it was newly generic and was affordable for us to move forward with, plus our cardiologist on the study with us convinced us it was a statin that was commonly used. And at the time, I think 40 milligrams was a pretty moderate dose, and I think now it's considered maybe high. I'm not 100% sure. So do you think there was something unique about simvastatin, or would these data apply to any of the statin agents? Well, it's a lipophilic statin, so it penetrates all lipid membranes throughout the body. And so there's an idea that potentially pravastatin, which is a hydrophilic statin, may only target the liver. And there's some evidence and not affect skeletal muscles adversely. And there's some evidence in rodents that that is true. They actually did an exercise study in rodents. And when they used pravastatin, it didn't cause the negative effects that they see with the lipophilic statins like simvastatin or atorvastatin. As I recall, you also did some muscle biopsies to look for biochemical evidence of statin effect. Right. And what we saw there was that in the exercise-only group, they had a 13% increase in citrate synthase activity, which is a marker of mitochondrial content. However, in the exercise plus statin group, they actually had a negative 4.5% decrease. This is similar to a previous study in which they measured the effects of 80 milligrams of simvastatin alone with no exercise, 
and they showed that mitochondrial content was reduced by 40 to 50 percent in patients. So we weren't surprised to see this effect. So you have a mechanism by which a reduction in exertional capacity could be mediated. Exactly. It's probably central to skeletal muscle mitochondria. Wow. Well, that's pretty interesting. Now, the $64 question to me is whether or not I should stop taking statins, which I do prophylactically in order to enhance my exertional ability. What you could do is get your fitness tested, and if you're above some of those cutoffs that are out there for increased mortality and cardiovascular disease risk, if your fitness is average or above average, then you're probably okay continuing to take statins prophylactically. If you're an individual with very, very low fitness and your cholesterol isn't a problem, it's maybe moderate, then maybe you should increase your fitness with exercise before thinking about taking statins. And that's all just complete conjecture. I'm not a cardiologist, but I do think these discussions need to be had because there's a lot of evidence that midlife fitness and fitness throughout your lifespan is extremely important for protection from chronic disease and early mortality. Yeah, no doubt about it, but I can tell you that cardiologists in particular who are confronted with the ravages of atherosclerosis on a daily basis are very inclined to do things that are prophylactic, like taking statins to lower their LDL, even when their baseline statin level is at goal. In kind of offhand surveys I've done of cardiologists at lectures, I find that a high percentage of them do indicate that they're taking statins prophylactically, even in the absence of an elevated LDL. It certainly may have some implications in terms of how readily we use statin agents, particularly in patients who already have some disability. Now, what about athletes? I have some patients who still love to participate, for instance, in long bicycle races, in mini marathons and things like that, but who are also taking statins prophylactically. What should we tell them? So there is evidence that statins cause elevated creatine kinase levels and maybe induce greater muscle damage in those who exercise. There was a study in familiar hypercholesteremic professional athletes in Europe. Most of them were soccer players, and almost none of those patients or athletes could tolerate statins with their professional level of physical activity. What should you tell those athletes? I've actually myself had a lot of these phone calls, and I've talked to a lot of cardiologists who do exercise and take statins. One prominent cardiologist I know who exercises a lot told me that he goes off a statin a month or so before he has a big race. I would just think about if you think that you feel as good as you would if you were not taking statins. Another idea would be to lower your dosage, maybe from 40 milligrams to 10 milligrams if you're taking simvastatin. I don't know. There's also some evidence now epidemiological report that there's about 20% greater orthopedic injuries if you're on statins. That was a study that came out of the VA. And I was just talking to a cardiologist the other day who said that he had more tendonitis, he thinks, when he was on statins than when he's not on statins. I think these conversations need to be had. I'm not sure I'm the expert to make the final decision, but I would always suggest to lower dosage if you can or to switch to a different kind of statin. The next time I'm in a competitive event, I may try to get some statin introduced into the water supply of the people I'm playing against. (laughs) I've met enough people just in the town I'm at. I've thought about doing a study where I recruit them, take some biopsies, do some performance tests, and then ask them to go off their statins for a month or so. It doesn't take a long time to wash them out. They only have about, I think it's a five-hour half-life. Well, thanks very much for sharing this data with us. Very interesting. Thanks for your interest, and I'm excited it got published in Jack.